by bedding. Um, you want it to be highly absorbent. White wood shavings are best. Do not use cedar, and I made that, I messed that one up when I was a kid, um, because it affects the respiratory tract and it'll kill them. It'll make them really sick and it's not good. Cedar's good for a lot of other things, not bedding for chickens. Um, don't use finely ground shavings, it gets too dusty. They're gonna scratch, they're gonna move it around and that dust is an issue. Again, for the respiratory fact of the bird. Um, straw, what I found, cow hay is really good for chicken coops. Um, you can, it's, it's cheap, it's inexpensive, and you can put it in there and they'll scratch it out for you and make it nice and fluffy. Nesting boxes, this is something that, man, back in the day, I felt like you could always get a milk crate. You could always have a good nesting box, and I cannot find milk crates anymore. But you want them about 12 by 12 by 12, 12 deep, 12 wide, 12. I think times go times height. You'll learn that one day, hopefully. Yes. Don't look at me that way. You will. One day you'll learn. I promise. So you want a soft bedding material in there. It should be secure, and you don't want it to rock. If the chicken's going to feel uneasy, she's not going to. She's not going to lay. She's not going to want to bed down in there. Um, get it off of the ground. Um, so a lot of your, a lot of those breeds that we looked at, they like to get up and get out and to lay those eggs out of the way. Um, and train your birds to use the nesting box. Uh, don't allow access to the nesting box earlier than 18 weeks of age. Um, don't put perches near, under, over nest boxes. Keep clean, chain shavings, regular bases. Check for eggs several times per day. This is where even me, Mr. Derek, I fall way short because I probably check eggs once a day, maybe maybe once every two days, maybe once every three days. Yes, ma'am. I have to pay money. You have to pay money when you. When I leave eggs in the tube. Because we sell our eggs and we don't want to sell them with half grown babies. Well, we might need to, to think about doing that in my house. Like <laughs> check for eggs. You don't want to leave them in there um, unless you're trying to hatch them. And if you have a hen that you want to get broody and be a mama, you can do that. Um, straw, your hay works really good. A lot of these are going to say shaving. You can use that as well. Straw hay works just, just as good. Dust bath. Anybody ever heard of diaphragmation surf? Yes. Yes. Yes, the mites and all this other stuff. This is some chickens in a dust bath of diatomaceous syrup. They love doing this. And if you let them out, if you just let them out in your yard, they're going to find your dirt and they're going to do it there too. They love to take dust baths. Limits. Yep, they're going to do that too. Limits the buildup of oil from preening materials. Uh, peat moss, dirt, sand are primary materials. Uh, the diatomaceous earth is good. Also, I like wood ash. Um, I, I'll take the ash from a bonfire I've done and I'll put it right into the, the coop. They'll bathe in it and it helps keep the parasites down. <clears throat> a safe chicken equals a productive chicken. So what do chickens eat? Kind of, don't look at that. What do chickens eat? Corn grain. <laughs> you can read. We're so proud of y'all. What else? Vegetables. Chicken food. Chicken food? Yes, sir. Bugs. Bugs. How many? Vegetables. All right, you got it up. Corn, grain, <laughs> vegetables, and insects. They love everything. We we keep a we keep an old coffee can, and all of our scraps kind of go into it, and they devour. They love it. Um, having a balanced diet for your flock is critical for good egg production. While having treats like mealworms and fruits, they're great. Like I'll take, how many people, moms, I would say dads if you do the shopping at the shopping market, but most likely it's moms. You buy a bag of apples or a bag of oranges or a banana and sit it out on the counter and you totally forget you got it. <laughs> Ah, oh, we throw them away. 
Bone deer chicken. They love it. I mean, they they absolutely love it. And it's really good for their system. Some fruits and stuff like that are really good for them to help in that production. But chickens have to have a balanced diet. So while having those treats, they still need a base diet to perform their best. Pellets and crumbles are two of the ways most of your chicken feeds are made. Um, and they deliver a balanced nutrition in every bite. Me and Miss Beth were talking earlier. Chicks, you, you kind of have to feed crumble. I prefer pellet to my bigger chickens. Reason being, I find a little less waste. Waste is important. That's just my opinion. You can do with that what you want, but there you go. Uh, chick nutrition. Starter grower feeds. First 18 weeks, chicks need everything they can get to have the best start. Find a feed that is well balanced so there's no need for supplements. Crumble, medicated, unmedicated. Um, the un medicated, unmedicated, that's kind of a, a buzz terminology of late. If you're feeding chicks and you don't want them to die, I highly recommend medicated feed. Um, I have had less death loss in chicks with medicated. I don't frown upon unmedicated. I don't even talk bad about it because that's just really it's personal <laughs> preference. So, but you want to look for something right around that range on your protein. Um, I wouldn't even be shy of going to a higher protein with chicks. If you're feeding out those Cornish dual purpose breeds that are going to be meat birds, you're going to want that to be around 30 or more. Layers. After 18 weeks, you can transition over into a layered diet. Lower protein, but higher in calcium to promote strong eggshell formation. Also, it's going to be in a crumble or pellet um, form. 16% is about what across the board all are going to be. Um, you can add things to that. That'll, if you like to feed some mealworms, then that's just extra protein for the day. And that's a treat. Um, prebiotics, probiotics, immune and digestive health, and amino acids for feathering and egg production. Um, in some of the feeds, like these Lena products, and a lot of your more expensive, higher line chicken feed products that are out there, you'll see higher added omega 3s. Uh, marigold extract is something that we have in ours. Um, calcium, magnesium, all that stuff is important because when it goes into your chicken, Where's it going after that? To the egg. It's going to you. You're going to eat that egg, or I'm going to eat that fried chicken out of an eagle. So, think about that stuff. So, last question. What came first? Chicken or the egg? Chicken. I heard egg. Chicken? Egg? Egg. Egg. Mm. Chicken. It's a great question that we all ask. This chicken had to come first, too. <laughs> Who gave the Who made it? There's so many questions we can ask off of that. So was it? But, but God. in the beginning, God made chickens first. That's right. That's the best answer. All right. So, last. Can you sound like a chicken? I don't hear any roosters. Damn it, boy! Say it down! <laughs> I want to thank you all for your time. Sorry about a little long-winded. Um, if you want, afterwards, you can hold some of the birds that I did bring. I brought some of mine. If you have any questions, I have cards and I can hand them out. But I appreciate y'all. And if there's anything I, I, Karina, or the co-op can do for you, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank y'all. So does anybody have any questions? No. All right. I have a question. A question. Why? Oh, yeah. When you want them to get used to nesting boxes, if, if they're not... So what you'll find with them is they'll start getting in there and that's where they want to sleep. I'm saying we have no adult chickens. We only have baby chicks at this right. point. So they'll, they'll be sleeping in there? You'll see some that are sleeping. I've had some that sleep in there and then that's the main reason why. Is you'll, that's sleep time. And really when they're sleeping, we want them on a roost. Okay, this is our first. It's okay, fine. Wait. We it's it's what not like an end all to be all. Like it's not like oh we screwed up. It's not. They're gonna 
Right. They're going to be, they'll, they'll acclimate and they'll get around to it. So you're just, mainly it's just for the droppings. Because what will happen too is they'll roost by it or on it. And then your, your, your nesting boxes are full. Right. Right. And it's nesting. Well, it's a good thing our chickens don't buy nesting boxes. They stay in the middle of the They go in the Any other questions? How about tell us about your um, your chick chickens that you brought? So I brought I brought three chickens with me. I brought I brought two hens and a rooster. So this chicken up front, right here, she is a lavender orpington. She's an egg layer. She does really good. She lays a lot of eggs and she's a fat bird. She's, that's my fat lady, so. Um, and then the one next to her, right here, she is, she's kind of a cool story. She got really sick as a pullet. And I don't know what happened, like, one night, I thought she was just dying. And we brought her inside and we <coughs> docked her and stuff, and she survived. But she's a Ericana, and she lays them all of eggs, so. And then this, so she's Ericana, she's a lavender orpican, and this is a white hackle rooster. It is an, it's an older, gamier breed of chicken. Um, he's dubbed, he came from up north, and they dub him due to frostbite. That's one of the things, and then a lot of your game breeds, when you show them in poultry shows, if they're a game breed, you've got to dub them due to their, their breed standards. 